Hi everyone, welcome to our channel, Rebecca Stu and the crew. I'm Rebecca and today I'm going to show you guys how to make some easy sew um, masks with a filter and a wire in the top so it stays fitted around your face by your nose. So the supplies you will need to create these are one of these 3M filters for furnace that you can pick up at Walmart. Now I know that sounds funny, but these are 1500 filtration level. It protects you from all of these little circles in yellow here, but the most important thing I saw was the one where it says it protects you from cough and sneeze debris, bacteria, and virus. I'm not a doctor, I don't know if this works, but they make masks out of 3M material, so I figure it was better than nothing, so I would give it a try. So we cut the filters down to four inch by five inches, and we are using these nylon weaving looms from um, Hobby Lobby because the elastic that fits in our size that we need is sold out everywhere. The thinner the better. If you use these, you want to cut them five inches long because they're really stretchy. If you use regular elastic, you want quarter inch elastic, six inches long. They say it's more comfortable the thinner the elastic is. So our material from Dollar Tree and Walmart is either a dollar for a square or 97 cents. I have this cute bunny pattern from the Dollar Tree. You can get Star Wars, different fun patterns at Walmart, or a full yard for three to four dollars. So the pipe cleaners, we're cutting those six inches long for around the nose and I'm using a marker to mark the top and the back to help people put them on correctly also an iron and a sewing machine so let's get crafty so the first thing we're going to do is take our filter and open it up so I pulled all of the wire and cardboard off of these and this is what we're left with it's also double-sided so um, you don't need a lot of those so cut your material filter and elastic to size if you're making a lot of mass this helps cutting all your supplies first to make a large quantity quickly and easily so the first thing we're going to do is just iron our material so we have a nice smooth surface to work with and then we're going to fold that in half with right sides together. So this will be on the outside when we're finished. We want the printed pattern on the outside. And we're gonna fold that in half, line it up, and then iron that. Also, if you're working with a pattern that has like right side, make sure when you're sewing it that wherever your front top is at, that you're sewing it in the right direction so the pattern's facing the right way. Okay, so once we have that ironed, we're going to take our filter that we've already cut down to size, and we're gonna put that right in the center of the top square and then just pin that in place to help hold it on. Just one pin in the center is plenty. So now we're going to start stitching this on. So the first thing I did was make sure that I do a locking stitch. So I don't sew, I sewed literally in high school was the last time I did any type of sewing. So I do remember that from Homec. <laughs> um, so now we've got our lock stitch in. You want to go ahead and get all the way to the corner, keep your needle down and then turn it so that we can go along the whole outside edge of this filter here. So like I said, I haven't sewn since you know high school, which was 20 some years ago, more time than I like to admit to, but um, you know, it kind of came back to me a little bit. So as you can see, these are really easy to do because like I just do not know how to sew. So I was pretty impressed with myself how these turned out. So they're actually easier than you think. And I know you guys can do it. So now that we've got three sides done, we're gonna finish this um, top stitch across the top. And then to help hold it down just a little bit better um, for like washing, by the way, you just wanna hand wash these. You don't wanna put them in a washing machine or a dryer. It probably will break that little pipe cleaner that we're using as the wire for around the nose. And then you just want to have those air dry. So we're going to do a diagonal stitch all the way down across the center. And then we're going to go ahead and cut that um, thread after we lock in this stitch here and then we're going to um, remove the material and just turn it around so we can do um, the diagonal from the other direction so we have a nice X across the front of this filter to hold it in place and then don't forget to lock stitch your corner Okay, so we're already done with the first part. So now what we're going to do is we are going to take our material here and we're going to fold it back on that fold 
and we're going to actually sew a little hem here at the top. So we're going to do about an eighth of an inch away from the top of that fold and we're creating a pocket. This is where our wire is going to sit to help keep it from like sliding around and moving where you don't want it to be. And so it stays in place, you have a nice secure fit. So we're gonna go all the way across the top. We're going to turn our material so that it is facing you and then we're going to do about three or four stitches down and then we're going to turn the material again so we can create this little pocket that the filter that the um, pipe cleaner or our wire is going to fit into so now when you get to the end you don't want to close this up just yet so that we can slide the wire down inside so you do want to lock stitch that last little bit there and then remove your material. So now we've got our pipe cleaner already cut down to size, and it's very simple. You just take it, and you wanna start sliding it into that little pocket that we've created. It usually goes in pretty easily. Um, as long as you don't have any bend to the wire, it slides in really easy. Once you have it slid mostly into place, what you wanna do is just kinda of cinch it across the top, because you really wanna get this wire centered and over the top of that filter. That's gonna help the mask to stay centered on the face. And now that we've got that done, you can see the wire on either side. I just keep moving it so I have it. So it's just hanging over each side of that filter just a tiny little bit. And now we're gonna lock stitch both of those corners in once it's all lined up there because that's going to help keep that in place. And we don't want that wire popping through that material and poking anybody. So we're going to go ahead and just lock stitch those into place. Just a few stitches back and forth a few times. Now when you line up your material, you wanna be real careful that you don't line up your foot and your needle to where you're going to go over that wire because if it hits it, chances are you're gonna break your needle and if you don't have an extra one, project over. So now that's all stitched into place. We are taking our elastic, or in this case, our nylon loops. You do wanna iron it real quick. I forgot to mention that part. Open it up and iron it right on that seam we just created. So now put your loop in the corner, or your little elastic in the corner, and make it go diagonal so that you're not sewing over top of it. So now we're going to close that up and put that over top of the um, corner there, and we're gonna stitch back and forth a few times to lock that in place. Once we have that done, we actually turn it, and we're going to sew down the side. And it doesn't hurt to go ahead and back stitch again at that top. So you go over that elastic a few times because it's gonna have a lot of pull to it with wear. So now that we've lined up our edges and just sew down that side right there, once we get almost to the end, you wanna leave a little space in the corner there. You're going to stop, keep your needle down, lift the foot and then reach inside and you're going to grab your piece of elastic and then we're going to take that little piece and put that down into the corner. Once we have that in place, just fold your material back down and again, turn it so you can sew diagonally across that piece of elastic. And don't forget to go back and forth a few times so that you lock that into place. Now you're going to turn this, so we're going to stitch along the bottom. It's really important that when you're stitching along the bottom, you don't close the whole entire thing because we still have to put the elastic piece on the other side and we want to have a little pocket that we can open up to turn this to the right side. So we're just gonna make sure that those bottom edges are lined up really well. I'm not a big fan of using pins. I always forget they're there and then, well, I used to always forget they were there and I would row, uh, sew right over top of those. So go ahead and lock stitch in your little stitch down here at the bottom. And then we're going to do the same thing to the other side. Take your elastic, stick it up in that little corner, fold your um, material back over, stitch diagonally back and forth a few times. Sew down the side. And then reach in and grab your elastic and finish that bottom corner. And now sew down the bottom just a little bit, not all the way, leave your pocket. Don't forget to backstitch the end of your row. Now we're going to turn this to the right side. Once we have this all turned in, you wanna really make sure you pay attention to your corners. So you wanna just use either your finger or a pencil, just reach up inside there and 
um, fix your corners real well. You want to have a nice edge so that you can stitch around the outside trim of this to help hold everything in place and to just give a little bit more reinforcement to that elastic. I'm just afraid they're going to pop out if they're being heavily used. So I want to make sure those are really locked into place. So once I get all of my corners adjusted, I just want to take that top edge with the wire in it. I grab it and I just give it a nice pull and smooth that wire out. Got a little bit bent as we were flipping it to the right side. You also want to do that to the edges. Just kind of grab each corner and give it a quick pull. It helps line everything up. Then you want those little pieces of elastic to be towards the front because we're going to iron this and you don't want to go over these little nylon pieces. You'll melt them. If you're using elastic, I'm sure it's fine. So we're going to go ahead and iron all these edges to have a nice crisp edge. And this is what it looks like so far. A little crooked at the bottom, but like I said, I don't sew. So now we're going to start in a corner and we're going to lock stitch that and we're just going to do a nice thin hem all the way around this mask. And the key here, especially at the bottom, is to close up that little piece that we left open to turn it right side. Um, you want to make sure that those pieces of material are folded in and that you have enough to grab. So you don't want to stitch too high, just enough um, so that you're catching that material and you're closing that little bottom opening there. So when you get to the corners, just turn your lock stitching in those um, pieces of elastic. And when you get to the top, don't forget you have a wire there. So you want to go down a little bit, a few stitches, turn, go around the wire, and then turn and go back up and around. Once you've gone all the way around the wire, just continue all the way down back to the place that you started initially. Now I've done these masks without the hem and I think it just looks neater with it. That's why I do it. So now you want to turn it to the face, the front is facing you. You pinch each side and just fold it up and then you're going to put a pin on each side to help hold this little um, pleat in place. The pleats are necessary. You don't have to do them, but it's kind of necessary because it actually helps it to contour to your face so that it is going to stay with a more like snug fit around your chin and things. So you're going to do one more fold and then you are going to um, pin that. Now make sure that you did it the right direction and that your wire is still at the top. And you're going to turn it upside down because you want the pleats facing you so that that presser foot doesn't get stuck underneath of the pleats. And then you're going to lock stitch this um, on either side and just sew right over those pleats. You don't have to go all the way to the top. You just want to go over both pleats and then lock stitch that into place and you're going to do that on both sides of your mask. And we're pretty much finished here at this step. They take me about 10 minutes now that I've got practice. I press it. I mark with a little X on the back. It's the back and the top. So I pull it open. If you grab each side of the mask and just pull it flattens back out which is really nice. You can fold it and store it easily. Now, I've been making these with gloves on and then I store them in some cello bags to keep them clean and sanitary. So my daughter Sierra, she looks a little miserable. She just had a wisdom tooth pulled, but she modeled this mask for us. You guys could see the side, how those pleats help to keep it around the sides of the face nice and snug and pinch around the nose for that wire. And like I said, you want to store those if you're going to be giving them out to people or donating them so that they're clean. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like and share this video, especially if you think it will help somebody. Don't forget to subscribe and here are some other videos from our channel you might also enjoy. Please stay safe out there. Have a great day.